wishing to take the floor, I'll give the floor to the Honorable Attorney General for you to speak in reply. Um, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Sir, Mr. Speaker, sir, um, I'd like to just uh, perhaps uh, respond um, uh, very, very quickly, sir. Um, Honorable Nawaikula, thank you for reading out the basis on which the license is actually granted, but also more so the Section 6, which says suspension and cancellation of licenses. It says, when during the currency of a license it appears or is made to appear to the board that either A, a hotel or any part of a hotel is being run or conducted in an improper manner, or for illegal or immoral purposes, or a hotel or any part thereof is or has become unsuitable for use as a hotel, the board may either order the manager of the hotel to carry out its remedies or cancel the license. It does not have anything, Honorable Gavoka, to do with revenue and where the revenue is made. The hotel licensing board has got nothing to do with revenue. What you have raised, Honorable Gavoka, is actually a very pertinent issue. And in fact, you may recall in this parliament, we talked about how FRCS is now trying to track that revenue. And they are still, even with some of the, uh, some of the larger hotels, the revenue, in fact, some of it is actually booked offshore. Because the chain hotels can do more of that. The revenue is booked offshore, and people simply just turn up here. And that's some of the work that FRCS, in fact, has been doing to ensure that even though it's owned by a foreign company 100%, the revenue must come into Fiji, and then the money is actually uh, you know, uh, repatriated back or sent back uh, to wherever the, the actual principal office is. The, uh, the hotel is, in fact, Mr. Speaker, has been uh, asking for this for quite some time. <clears throat> Honorable Nawaikula talked about how it's been placed since 1973 or 75, and the technology has changed significantly. But also in 1973 75, we did not have an OHS, high standard of OHS, which the hotel has to comply with in any case, and a separate piece of legislation. Occupational health and safety is now very much part and parcel of all the hotels. We did not have a national fire authority in the way that we do have now. There's also compliance requirements, so all those requirements will still need to be met. In other words, the high standards will be maintained. Honorable Kurindrani, for once actually, oh, he's gone. Uh, in fact, had uh, stated about how it should help, you know, smaller uh, uh, local hotels. Yes, it will help them because it does not. They find it very hard. If somebody is operating some ecotourism with, you know, five burays on some island, imagine them having every year from the hours to file this annual licensing application. It's very difficult for them. For the big boys and girls, it's okay. But no, somebody may be operating a small resort in Bua. For them to come and do this on an annual basis is very difficult for them. This is precisely one of the reasons why we're doing it. It gives people certainty. When they go to their banks, when they apply for loans, they will say, I've got my annual license for five years. The banks know, okay, this person can operate. Anbal Gavoka sort of ducked and weaved and said, you know, we should defer this. And did we consult the landowners? The lease on which, if you have a hotel that uh, the hotel is operating on, Obviously, they cannot operate as a hotel without a lease. And there is no provisions in the law under the lease that says, when you apply for annual uh, hotel licensing lease, you must consult TLTB. No, it does not say that. So you see, again, another administrative problem he wants to create. On the same token, they all talk about ease of doing business. He complained about the EIA. Municipal Council. And here we are trying to ease things for us, in particular Fijian businesses, to make it easier for them to encourage local businesses. You know, somebody can put up a five bure, ten bure, eco park, eco tourism, walk out in the, you know, in the interior of Viti Levu, Bukuya, and all those places. We are trying to encourage the Ministry of Tourism to set up some bures in the interior because that's another feature of Fiji that is not, you know, highlighted very much. We all kind of sun sand in the beach. So <clears throat> these things will help them. Mr. Speaker, sir, the, uh, uh, I mean, I, I really don't have much more to comment on that, but you know, to those people who have some form of fear that by giving a five-year license, suddenly these people will be able to run amok. No, they can't. As I highlighted, the board will be seized as to who has the licenses. The board can any time go and do an inspection and anybody can actually complain. So if Honorable Nawaikula goes to a hotel and he believes some funny business is going on, he can actually go and complain immediately to the board. And they will immediately investigate. 
So, Mr. Speaker, sir, again, I, I thank all the members for, uh, for contributing to this, and I urge them, and I'd like to also encourage all the hoteliers that please, uh, this, with the passing of this bill, you'll now be able to have another feature which makes things easier for you. Uh, please apply. We also have, as you see in the bill, Mr. Speaker, sir, there's a transitional provision, <coughs> which is uh, 5B, under clause 2. It says that should anybody at this point in time have already made the application, they'll be subject to the new law as it passes. So thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir.